Let's take a walk through an MSDS. Material safety data sheets will contain more detailed information than on the label. As we look at the contents of a data sheet, you will see a Canadian MSDS contains nine parts. Section one contains information on the product's name and what it is used for. Section two will list the hazardous ingredients and information to interpret how toxic they may be to humans, such as the term LD50, which represents the dose it took to be lethal on 50% of the test animals the ingredients were tested on. The LD50 number is usually expressed as volume, and it will include the species of lab animal used and the method of exposure. Usually if the LD50 is less than 200 milligrams, the material should be considered very toxic. The lower the LD50 number, the more toxic the material is. Section 3 will provide the physical characteristics, starting with the basic form the product is in, a solid, a liquid, or a gas. If it is a gas, the vapor density will tell you if the gas rises in the air or sinks low to the ground, such as vapors from propane, natural gas, or gasoline. A vapor density of more than one will sink, and the vapor density of less than one will rise. If a product is a liquid, specific gravity will indicate what its weight is compared to water, which will tell you whether it floats or sinks. Other useful information could include the freezing or boiling points. Section 4 gives information on the flammability of the product, and if it is flammable, under what conditions, such as auto-ignition temperature, flash point, and the upper and lower flammable limits which are expressed as a percentage. Remember, the lower the percentage, the easier the material will ignite. Some materials may be sensitive to static discharge. In this case, wearing static-free clothing and observing proper grounding methods will be important information. This section will also indicate the suitable type of extinguisher in case of a fire. Section 5 will give reactivity data. For example, if you were to mix it with another product, would it create a poisonous gas cloud? Or maybe even a bomb? Section 6 will give toxicology data, such as how the product can enter your body, usually by inhalation, ingestion, absorption, or injection. Other information such as reproductive effects, or if the material causes cancer, will also be included in this section. Section 7 will spell out preventative control measures, such as control at the source, control along the path to the worker, and control at the worker. An example of control at the source could be substitution of a very hazardous product for a lesser non-toxic product, such as an oil-based paint versus a water-based or latex paint. An example of control along the path could be using a vacuum or dust collector system in a wood shop, or doing wet cuts while cutting tile or bricks. Both of these methods will eliminate the majority of the hazard before the worker is exposed to it. Control at the worker is usually referred to as personal protective clothing and equipment, such as the use of gloves or respirators. Section 8 of a data sheet will give basic first aid measures in case of an overexposure. And Section 9 will indicate the preparation date of the data sheet. Under the MSDS section, we explored the nine parts of a Canadian MSDS. Some of the critical information includes LD50, physical properties, flammability, reactivity data, toxicology, and PPE required to use the product safely. We also reviewed methods of exposure and control options.